presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to Eddie in Boca Raton. Hey, Eddie, what's going on? Hey, Tom, how are you, man? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? Good, good. It is a treasure to have TFNN every hour during the trading day to be there to help you, to guide you, and even to give you some peace of mind or like that, that somebody else is there with you while you're, while you're trading this crazy market, either up or down. Well, listen, we appreciate you growling prowling with us out here because we wouldn't be out here, folks, if we didn't have all you guys, gals, tigers and tigresses as clients. And, you know, the market teaches you every single day, man. Now, Tom O'Brien. What's going on, folks? My name is Jacob. Uh, let's read a little bit today. So the card for today says there are two halves in every relationship, but you are only responsible for your half of the relationship. It is not up to you to control the other half. Respect the other half, and there is always going to be peace in that relationship. Very beautiful. Can't say much more than that, right? Um, so our number is 877 uh, 927-6648. You can email me at jacob at tfnn.com. Um, also reading the Tiger's Den. Uh, if you're not in there, you got to get in there. And uh, I'll also be checking the YouTube comments. So we got a lot to talk about today. Uh, let's just go through the major indices first. Uh, we have the Dow Jones is down only 0.48%. Let's see here. The NASDAQ down about 1%. Um, another one I want to focus on a lot we Dow Jones uh, transportation average, which is down 5.61%. And then getting into the uh, SPX cash, S&P 500 is down um, about 0.74%. So to focus on that a little bit, one of the reasons I say you should get in the den is that we actually had a little contest going on, all right? And the contest was um, who could uh, most closely approximate the close of the SPX on Friday. And the top three winners, we're gonna get one of these nice mugs of TFNN.com on them, the nice uh, cool tiger. It's nice, it's not my mug though, I'm not gonna drink from it. <laughs> uh, so let's see here, I think, this is, a, this is tentative right now, we still got another hour before it closes, but I think the closest we have currently is gonna be No More Guff, Rich for Life, and Dilly Dilly 94. So that is not, uh, the absolute winners yet. Like I said, we still have another hour, but you guys, you gotta get in the den. It is so fun. These guys, I mean, I learn so much from everyone in the den every day. And uh, I, I'd really recommend you coming in, chatting with everyone, contributing and learning more. So if we want you to go to tfnn.com um, and sign up, it's only $1 a year. We just do that to kind of keep the rabble out. Um, we're never gonna raise it, so let's see here. All right, let's go through some of the other indices. Um, DIA is down 0.7. Everything's kind of within these bounds here, about 0.5 to 0.8. Um, the SPY is down 1.08. Meta is down 2%. Tesla down 0.26%. Apple down almost a whole percent. Steel Dynamics uh, down 1.5. So what I want to talk about today, um, kind of just jumping into it, the first thing that really caught my eye, I, I, forgive me because I can't remember who posted it into the den, um, but it's the, uh, the yield curve, the U.S. 10-year versus the two-year government bond spread has essentially inverted. Um, so the way you get that is you take the, the rate of one of them and subtract it from the other, and that gives you uh, the, the product, uh, rather the solution of that would be basic point, uh, basis points. So obviously, since we're in negative basis points here, the two-year is higher yield-wise. What happens with that, if uh, you're not hip to it, is essentially when recessions come around, the short term uh, kind of gets a little bit shaky. People want to kind of flee from the shorter term debt in favor of the longer term debt. Um, the, uh, the price of the bond is inversely related to the yield. Uh, so the, as the price goes down, um, uh, the yield increases. Um, so we can see here that uh, about right before the crash in 2008, we had this kind of same pattern. Obviously the crash um, from COVID, um, and we're kind of seeing that uh, here. I, it's interesting to see what the, the Fed will do because, you know, in, in these times, what they could do is essentially lower interest rates to create um, liquidity. 
uh, but currently the Fed's trying to do things um, that, that do not result in that. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how we kind of recover out of this. Um, let's see what else. FedEx, huge uh, kind of, <laughs> I guess, bomb from them. Uh, Raj Subram, uh, excuse me, CEO Raj Subramaniam warned of a worldwide recession due to inflation and central bank rate increases. Additionally, um, China is having a pretty intense uh, quarantine to kind of stamp out COVID. Um, this is causing uh, further supply chain difficulties. Let's see here. Um, uh, so FedEx decided to pre-announce earnings well below estimates and pulled its financial guidance. Um, this resulted in a 20% decrease. Let's see where we're at now. Yes, yeah, hover around 21% uh, decrease here. This is on a one day. Let's check it out. On a year to date. Yeah, this is insane. And save movements. Um, the CEO said global volumes declined as macroeconomic trends significantly worsened. Um, so there is some collateral with this. Uh, we have here, let's see, we have um, uh, Packaging Corp of America, which is down about uh, 9%, 9.8%, is down 11 earlier. We have um, International Paper down 10%. This is doing a little better from the 12% it was down earlier. Uh, West Rock Company down, let's see here, down 10%. And then um, graphic packaging holding company down 5.7%. And that's maintained uh, throughout the day. I read an article kind of regarding this. And the, the opinion of the author was that this was more of a FedEx issue. And they brought up some like valid points for that. Um, but uh, I won't get into it now because we're about to go to the break in about two minutes here. But I do want to just do a quick look at some of the... Um, just some of the financials of the companies, uh, comparatively speaking, to see if this is, you know, because if, if this is a, a FedEx issue, then, um, you know, I do kind of believe this might be like an oversell um, by the market, um, but that might warrant um, some shaving off of the price of FedEx. But if it is a major sector issue itself, um, then, you know, I mean, UPS should... FedEx could probably increase a little bit more from its from its down because uh, UPS is only down. Let's see here, um, only down 4.7 percent. From kind of what I'm seeing, I, I do think this is going to be much more of a, a global issue. Um, obviously, both of these companies will have to kind of readjust uh, based on the on kind of the new global um, outlook. But does FedEx need to be down 21 percent? Probably not. I, I, I think this is like a big shock. I, I think releasing. Uh, the announcement before earnings was massive and then rescinding financial guidance was huge too. The CEO of companies need to be like the cheerleaders of it. So this is a pretty grim outlook. I mean, in a way, this is also positive. I mean, if the CEO and the board of FedEx really does see this as being kind of a global issue that's going to impact on the long term, it's really awesome to get that bad news out of the way immediately, at least in my opinion. You can get this massive retraction, this massive sell-off, and then things can build back to a proper level. Uh, when we get back, we have uh, um, Bestford calling in, excuse me. Um, we'll see what we'll talk about there. I want to talk on the mortgage rates and everything, um, and we'll see what he has to say. Uh, again, send me an email at jacob at tfnn.com. You can message me in the den or YouTube, and we will be right back. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. 
Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Um, in a minute, we'll get back to looking at the financials, comparing uh, FedEx and uh, UPS. But first, I believe we have Bestford on the line. Bestford, what's going on, man? Hey, how you guys doing? Doing all right, doing all right. How's your day going? Uh, pretty good. Just up here on the fifth floor, looking at uh, downtown St. Pete. <laughs> the new office looks great behind you, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> really, really cool. So, um, so one of the things I kind of wanted to bring up um, was this? I don't know if you can see my screen here, but it's the uh, late, latest mortgage news. Rates surge further past 6%, which is a 14-year high. So we can see a pretty exponential growth here. Let's see, so the 30-year fixed rate is at 6%. Uh, the 30-year jumbo is at 5.67%, and the 15-year is fixed at 5.17%. Uh, one of the things I didn't know when I was reading this, best for uh, was what jumbo loans were at all. So um, maybe you can give some inf uh, uh, some feedback on that. What I found out is that Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, um, they set these things called conforming loan limits, all right? Yeah. Um, so they, they buy to administer most single family home mortgages. They'll, they'll package up that debt and they purchase it. Um, and apparently the jumbo loans, you have to have what? Like extremely strict, there's extremely strict uh, credit regulations, large down payments, bigger cash flows. Like, what are you seeing with with that? Can, can you add well, anything else to that? Well, jumbo loan, uh, it's, it's not conforming. So jumbo loan is basically uh, just regular investors buy those loans. So the conforming loans are your VA, FHA, and conventional. So uh, the conventional right now, I believe the limit is 640, but it's jumping up to 715 or 720. I have to double check on that next year. So. That means that it's going to open up even more uh, uh, people to, to be able to buy more expensive homes at, at 720 uh, credit limit. Now, the jumbo loans, that's just a whole different ball game. Uh, yeah. That's not, not really, uh, it's regulated obviously, but not, not the same way as conventional FHA and VA. So, so, I mean, you're saying are they tightening restrictions on getting the loan is what you mean? You have to have a higher credit score to get one or? How are you saying that? No, so what they're doing is uh, they're raising the the loan limit. So right now the loan limit is about 640, I believe, for a conventional. Okay. So meaning th they can only give you a loan up to 640 on a conventional loan. So I see. So if you're buying a, a million dollar house, you know, you got to come up with uh, like $360,000 then. I understand. Okay. And they're about to raise it to 720. So the more they raise it up. You yeah, know, the lower payment you have to make out of, okay, I understand. Yeah, so less less out of pocket 
to buy these more expensive homes. Yes, kind of stimulate the kind of uh, uh, purchasing of mortgages or at least taking out of mortgages. So, I mean, do you see this as like a positive thing for uh, people in your field or mainly just for the banks? Well, I think the way they look at this is they just look at the average um, the average home prices, what they're selling for. So they're, they're kind of keeping up with, uh, with demand. I see. And so it obviously is good because especially down here in Tampa Bay where everything is getting so expensive uh, that it's kind of tough to buy properties uh, with a conventional loan because, you know, if they're 800000 and you got to come up with $160,000 down. I understand. This way, you know, you're coming up with $80,000 down instead. So just uh, the, the entry, it's a lot easier. Interesting. So I, was, I was running some numbers here. Yeah. Uh, so the, the median price right now in Tampa Bay is about 360000 right? So okay. 360000 at the current rates, uh, your monthly payment is looking around $2,900 a month. Wow. Okay. Now, if you if you go back and, and take that uh, interest rates of two point five percent, your your monthly uh, payment is going to be only twenty two hundred dollars a month. So okay. Seven hundred dollar difference. No kidding. Now here's where it gets interesting. If you were um, in order to get that twenty two hundred dollar a month payment now, the prices would have to drop by twenty five percent. Wow. 270000 at the current rates to be able to afford the same $2,200 uh. So, you know, the only thing I see now is the, these prices are going to continue to drop at this, uh, you know, these interest rates. Do you, do you so see this? going to drop 25%. I'm not sure, but I could see 15 to 20% for sure. Do you see this going to be like a quick process or will it kind of lag behind everything? It's going to take a while because, you know, uh, sellers, they, they still think they're going to get their price. Like like they were going to be able to get it like uh, four or five months ago. But that's right. Not, you know, we see a lot of these properties just sit on the market now because, you know, people just can't afford them. Right. And it's a little bit hard to reckon that, you know, a few months ago you could have made 200 grand more on selling a home if yeah. you were the homeowner. That's, that's pretty rough. But from yeah, what I understand, oh, go ahead. That's yeah. That's what these these guys are seeing, and they're they're thinking like, oh man, I just lost fifty, a hundred thousand dollars. But you know, that's that's what happens, and and we need it because at the rate it was going, everything was going to be worth a million dollars. <laughs> right, <So>. right. <laughs> and that's not good itself anyway. Um, what do you see regarding? Again, this is the major thing we always talk about, but it, it is so at least near and dear to me is the um, rents in general. Are you seeing uh, lower down of that or kind of just more of a stagnation? You know, it's, it's funny because I just uh, listed a property for rent uh, okay. two days ago. I haven't got any calls yet. Uh, it's definitely, uh, I'm seeing a lot more properties coming up for rent. You know, that is so interesting. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. A friend of mine has been trying to look for a, a, a new place to rent, right? They don't live in like a very good spot or anything like that. It's almost criminal kind of what that project is they're running over there. And so we've been looking on Zillow and I mean everything and everything goes immediately. It, everything goes immediately it seems, or at least it has been. So you're it, saying there's... It has been, yeah. Right. I think it's, it's starting to trend the other way too because same thing. The prices are getting so so ridiculously high that people just can't afford them anymore. So, uh, you know, I don't know if rents are going to go uh, going to go down, but I can see them stabilizing a little. Stabilizing bit. a little bit. Yeah, that, that might so. be the case too. And as I was saying, I, I don't know if it was yesterday or the day prior, um, but it does take a while for the rents to like lag down as well if that ever occurs, right? So we've been seeing a lot of the rents driving the inflation essentially. Yeah, no. yeah, the the rent is a big part of it. Yeah, because uh, you know, it's just it's crazy how much they're going for, and they they were going pretty quick. I think they they are kind of stagnating a little bit, but they're still going to go quick as long as you price the right. This is going to go. What are you seeing like the median rent at least in this area being? Do you have any numbers on that? I don't I don't have the exact numbers, but I can I can tell you that. You know, <laughs> Anything around downtown for a one bedroom, if you can get it under two grand, you're yeah. doing you know. I mean, I, I'm seeing like on these, I mean, it, it's depressing almost. Like I'm seeing on some of these um, 
rent applications. I mean, you, you get like a studio with one window and they're charging something like 1300 bucks a month for it. And that's just so destructive. I would, uh, we really do need to see a stabilization in that. You know, one of the cool things that's happening now is, uh, at least in St. Petersburg, uh, they've opened up a ton of new zones for um, these additional housing units, or excuse me, additional dwelling units, right? Mother-in-laws. Yeah. So we will see some alleviation for that. Um, so, yeah. yeah. I think it's gonna help big time, yeah. Awesome. Well, Bestford, it was great talking to you, man. Um, I don't know if you'll be around after the break, if, so that's fine either way. But guys, when we get back, we will go and talk about the FedEx and UPS. And uh, if you have any questions for Bestford or I, uh, please let me know. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and I'm, guidance I'm from right the now. authority in technical market analysis. Right and it's not just dry, tedious yeah, text either. Him. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. <clears throat> Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Okay, so Bestford, they're asking in the den. You know, every time when you're on with Tom every Friday, you'll pick a, pick a stock. And of course, that's my fault that we didn't go through that at all today. Um, but, but Mike in the den, along with other people, want to know, like, are you going short on this market? What's your outlook? You think we're going to get positive by the end of the day? You think we're going to go negative? I know your, um, let's see, your, <laughs> your um, submission for the Tigers mug was, I think, 399999. Yeah, I was, <laughs> so, I was short that, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, you know, as you know me, I know the market very, very well. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no. You're, no, no I, you're, well, you know, if, if, um, Real estate is going to go down. You know, I kind of see the market going down a little bit as well. So, you know, I don't know to what extent, but I'm sure it's going to go down. I mean, the the stock market just seems wild. You know, it's up and down every day. You know. Yeah, so you're I, certainly our authority on on real estate. So. so I'm sure you know the market is going to go down, but I'll come right back up. Real estate is a little different. I think it'll go down slowly and then come back up slowly. You know, just because it's, it's yeah. It's, a ball game, but yeah, I think real estate is going to go down a little bit too, just because 
things are sitting on the market and uh, and just aren't selling like they, they they should. But you know, with these interest rates, I can see why. You know, it's it's so right. about, you know a three hundred and sixty thousand dollar house, and your monthly payment is pretty much three grand a month. You know, so you know this is actually a good a good question from Mike in the den. Um, and I actually kind of wanted to touch on this a little bit. He asks if you're short on the home builders. What do you see about kind of construction? If you have any opinion on that coming up, I would say that they'll probably go down as well, just because you know now they're starting um, to give out incentives. So okay. like six months ago, they were they were only paying commission uh, like one percent, two percent. Now they're paying three percent commission plus giving you incentives to buy, you know, paying your closing costs or maybe buying down your uh, interest rates, just because they can't move these products like, uh, uh-huh. like they could before. So. Uh, you know, if you see that, then I would say they're definitely going to go down a little bit or maybe hold back on their uh, on their building. Well, there you go, Mike. Mike in the den. Short the home builders. That's, that's at least best for its uh, tentative opinion on it. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> he says nice. Wonderful. Well, awesome. Um, you know, one of the things yeah, you want to. So, well, yeah. listen, uh, next week. We'll, we'll buy some, we'll, some some stocks, or maybe I'll short something. We'll yeah, see. We'll get something cool. We'll get something cool going on next week. So we'll definitely find something. All right, all right. guys. You uh, have a good one. Thank you, Bassford. Have a good weekend, man. Bye now. Okay, guys. So let's go quickly back. I'll just run through this really quickly. Um, let's just compare. Uh, is this a FedEx issue, them dropping, or is it a UPS issue? We'll just hop to the next thing after this. If we look at the cost of revenue, um, it's 78% of, um, of the total revenue for FedEx. It is actually the exact same for UPS, okay? Uh, let's see here, the gross profit is 21% of total revenue FedEx's, and UPS's is exactly the same as well. Uh, now, FedEx's operating income is only 6% of the total revenue, while UPS's is 13%, um, but FedEx also has a better debt to equity uh, ratio. If we go over here, if this loads ever. They have a better debt to equity ratio than UPS. So it's, it's hard to say. I, I do, I really think that, you know, I think just that this whole sector is going to get smacked. And I think really the reality of the situation that will like kind of pete out. I mean, this is insane. This drop, I, I don't think this is warranted in any capacity. I think we're going to see something a little bit similar with UPS. And now it's hard to say, is UPS being affected because of the FedEx news? Yeah, I would say absolutely, especially if people are thinking that whatever the CEO said is accurate. So I don't know. I would definitely recommend you guys do a little bit more uh, research on your ends um, and see if this is uh, something you're interested in at all. Um, All right. One of the crazy things I want to talk about, uh, a big part of my personal portfolio um, is defense. Okay, this was like hammered into me by my grandfather, um, and it just kind of makes sense in general. So um, to kind of take a look at this, I mean, we were in a kind of an unstable situation right now, especially with Russia, um, some posturing, <clears throat> excuse me, some posturing by China. Um, so Germany is meeting uh, with, they're having a big NATO, excuse me, NATO meeting, uh, or I think October 16th or something around there. Uh, They're looking to form a joint missile defense program with NATO members in light of this Russian aggression. Uh, The biggest threat from Russia is their Iskander platform. So these are um, basically ground air missiles um, uh, that are on uh, wheeled platforms. Okay, it's going to go about 310 miles. Um, Now we think like, okay, Russia's so far away, but they have um, a place called Kaliningrad, which was previously Königsberg for all the... uh, all the history buffs out there, um, but from Kaliningrad, Russia, it, it is kind of blocked off from the from the rest of the border. Um, it's in the Baltic region, um, I think a bit northwest, uh, northeast of Poland. Uh, but that can hit a lot of Western countries, and that can be equipped with warheads. So we see um, more erratic behavior from um, Russian top brass. So the Germans are looking to kind of. Um, you know, bolster themselves. This could also be really positive for them, uh, for, for GDP, um, spending on military. Uh, so they're looking at purchasing the Israeli Aero 3s um, or an American platform, and we'll get to this in a second. Uh, that main competitor um, t- 
to the Arrow 3 is Lockheed Martin's THAAD system. And I believe the THAAD system was what was utilized in that recent um, killing of Al-Qaeda al leadership in Afghanistan. These things are crazy uh, to, to watch fire off. I mean, really some impressive pieces of engineering. Um, Israeli Aerospace Industries um, produced the Aero 3. Um, this thing flies into the atmosphere of Earth. It's not even, I mean, like, just a little bit below orbit, and it can track everything below it, right? So, I mean, again, another phenomenal piece of uh, engineering. So I really want to focus a little bit on Lockheed Martin in particular on this because they've had a lot of really good positive news um, and they're still making deals and getting new deals coming in. So the first thing is the Swiss Parliament just approved the purchase of 36 of their F-35 fighter jets and this totals 5.5 billion in the sale. Um, and this is just nice, it's nice to see like just expenditures occurring at this time. Um, and uh, Lockheed Martin is also in the middle of uh, investing $100 million in an advanced drone project. Uh, the idea is that a swarm of drones will be deployed by a, uh, like a mothership, essentially, okay? So you have your formation of fighter jets, and these drones will be deployed, and they'll follow around. They'll meet up with the fighter jets, and um, the pilots will be able to control these drones. And these things will be used as um, essentially like scouting um, objects. Uh, they can also draw fire. Uh, this is huge. Lockheed continually comes out with really groundbreaking things. Uh, one of the things I was mentioning earlier on the phone is how much of technology that we have on the consumer market, I mean, look at even like GPS or facial recognition, uh, had its beginning in kind of um, in, in, in military um, applications. Um, so it's interesting to, you know, kind of see that like uh, we we get pushed forward just in the consumer market um, because of the threat of conflict um, when we get back here in a second we're about to go to break here in about 45 seconds we'll go a little bit more just into uh, Lockheed um, they uh, have one more um, platform that I want to talk about um, and then we can talk about uh, Raytheon and Boeing as well just in a very very short capacity um, after that, I want to talk about Patagonia, CEO, um, what he did, and then uh, maybe talk a little bit on uh, current nuclear fission, the theory of cold fusion, and uh, the history behind that, just as a really neat kind of educational wrap-up. All right, folks, if you want to, give me a call, 877-927-6648. I am uh, I'm watching the den in the YouTube channels. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. 
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm Orion. Welcome back, folks. Um, so, baseball in the den um, made had a had a funny joke. How is Germany going to fuel those weapons that they get? And then. Uh, and then Sergey also said the main thing is hypersonics, and, and that's definitely true. Um, but one of the interesting things I read, uh, keep in mind, you know, I guess in some ways this is not always like widely agreed upon, but NATO tends to take it, especially places like Germany, tend to take a um, kind of more like defensive um, position, right? So they're not looking for land grabs or anything like that. So um, while the hypersonics are, are huge now, one of the things that Lockheed Martin has just delivered to the Pentagon and is going to be tested um, are these like lasers. They're called directed energy weapons. Um, it's a 300 kilowatt laser designed to replace traditional ground air platforms. It's totally defensive. Um, it is way cheaper than sending than sending missiles to intercept other missiles or hit down planes or, or whatever. Um, it'll be interesting just to see like on a technology level. Um, kind of what comes from that. So those are being, I think those are going to start testing um, fully this year. So that'll be, that'll be pretty insane to see. And that would obviously, that would, that would change defensive situations because it is so much cheaper to fire, you know, photons or whatever at, uh, at something than, than a whole other missile. Not as great news for places like Raytheon and Boeing. I mean, nothing really necessarily bad has happened regarding their business, but, um, the U.S. announced uh, last week uh, an arms sales uh, to Taiwan, totaling about uh, $1.09 billion. Uh, Boeing sold $355 million in harpoons, um, and uh, which are missiles, obviously, not the whaling kind. And Raytheon sold uh, $85 million in sidewinder missiles. So the <laughs> China basically sanctioned the CEOs of both those companies. But it's, uh, I mean, that's definitely more of a symbolic thing than anything else. Uh, just interesting to note anyways, as that uh, that struggle is still there between uh, Taiwan and China. So, one of the big headlines is Patagonia's CEO, Yvonne Chouinard, uh, is giving away the company to a trust that will use its profits to fight climate change. And I want to elucidate a little bit on how this works, what this actually means beyond just like your simple headlines or um, Facebook posts from your friends or whatever. Um, so Patagonia will continue to be a private, for-profit corporation, but the Chouinard family no longer owns the company. The company's voting stock is being transferred to a trust, while the non-voting stock has been given to Holdfast Collective, which is a pro-environment fund. Uh, even though the family no longer owns the company, this is the interesting point. They, they do not have the voting shares, but under this new structure, uh, they will still be on the board, okay? Um, and... Uh, so that, that voting stock was moved to Patagonia Purpose Trust. Uh, the family can still control the company being, the big thing about this is they're shielded from certain taxes, okay? So let's go into this a little bit. Um, so Holdfast, which is getting 98% of the total stock and 100% of the uh, non-voting stock, is a uh, 401 for non-profit. So, so what's interesting about these is you have a, 40, you have a 501, excuse me, um, C3s, which, um, is basically tax deductible. 
Okay, so these ones, the C4s, are not tax deductible. But there's some benefits that Chenard's going to get in the event that he, you know, passes away. Um, so the reason why these aren't tax deductible is because the C4s um, nonprofits can make unlimited donations to political causes. Okay, so one of the things I've been seeing, like a lot of people saying, is like, okay, yeah, so he he did this for headlines. Um, he's just uh, he wants to say it's for climate change, but really it was a shield him from taxes. And I think it's just a I don't, I don't buy that fully, right? Because the money that he has uh, left over and the money that is generated in profits um, is still gonna go to these kind of funds, right? And I'll give you an example of how these actually do affect um, the real world. Um, this is a better way of doing it. So he, he will have to, he will pay less uh, than, he were, uh, than he would have to if he were to sell the company, um, as he would incur capital gains taxes. And additionally, if he transferred that wealth, um, what I was researching is he would incur a 40% 40, 40 levy under the U.S. estate and gift taxes. Um, so according to Ray Madoff, who is a uh, Boston College Law School professor, what this method allows for the 501c4s is to es essentially still promote political causes um, at long after your death, okay? And um, an example of this is uh, Bar Saeed, who is the uh, owner of Trip Light. He did something similar, okay? Um, so he sold off Trip Light uh, to a 501c4, which then sold the company. He did not have to pay capital gains on that. Um, and additionally, they used a lot of the funds to um, promote actually American conservative causes. And so a lot of things that led to um, the Supreme Court um, having more, you know, I suppose Republicans on there was was really done by this 501c4 nonprofit. So it's interesting to see. I, I do like one of the things that we spoke about uh, when I was still in university um, was the obligation to stakeholders. Um, and, you know, for a while, that's always reigned supreme. And, you know, of course, that's majorly important. Um, but I one of the things we were also taught, which I understand is a bit of a, a new thing, is the um, the earth also being a uh, shareholder as well, because there's no way that we can make money um, and, and thrive and prosper and our children do the same if we don't take care of the environment as well. So it's interesting to see, it's, it's nice um, that this has occurred. I, I don't think it's purely just to avoid taxes. Um, I, I think uh, it's a positive thing and, and we'll see what happens. I, I know Holdfast only donates, I think something like $100 million a year in total. Um, but it, it'll be it'll be cool to see that um, in action. So when we get back, um, we got about two minutes to the break. Uh, I do want to talk about something interesting, which is the idea of cold fusion. As you guys probably know by now, I'm extraordinarily obsessed uh, with nuclear power. I, I think it's I think it is the future. Um, as I kind of just betrayed, I'm I'm also very interested in the environment, and I, I think. I really do think nuclear is the best way to do it uh, and also keep our standard of living. Let's just go everything uh, through everything real quick. We have the SPX just down 0.81%, not a lot of moves. Uh, the Q's down 0.79. Uh, we have the dollar staying kind of um, pretty stable here. Spies down 1.2. Meta down same. Tesla down a little bit more than it was earlier. So that I miss, let's take a look at my guy here. Not too bad, kind of underperforming a little bit. Doing a little bit worse. Let's see here. We can check the renewables quickly. Yeah, it's not so bad, huh? At least relative to the rest of the market, huh? Let's see here. Mm, let's do a week. So yeah, still, still not recovering from that downdraft. Very, very nice pattern here. <laughs> so do with that what you will. Again, check these out. Solar is interesting, I suppose. Um, we have the socks up a 0.25. The shorts down 0.47 in the long, um, up 0.38. So the outlook on chips is doing well. Um, all right, when we get back, we will just uh, knock out quickly. What time do we got here? Yeah, we'll knock it out pretty quickly here. But it's interesting nonetheless, and maybe give you a little bit of something to think about uh, beef, uh, on the weekend. So folks, we will be right back. Again, my number is 877-927-6648. Um, my email is jacob at tfnn.com, and uh, we'll be right back.
technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Okay, so just this weekend, I want you to just think about this. It's a little bit cool. So regarding nuclear fuel, nuclear power, the way that we do it here is through uh, nuclear fission, okay? So we take some kind of radioactive element and we shoot particles at it, all right? This creates an exothermic reaction. This heats up water. This uh, then transfers into steam and this turns large turbines. And so that's how we get power now. But what is the best nuclear body uh, that we as humans know of? And that answer is the sun. So the sun does it a little bit differently, okay? It does do both uh, fusion and fission. Um, however, uh, the, the, thing that's, the thing that is most attractive is that fusion is so much cheaper because in order to have fusion, you just need very light particles. So the sun takes hydrogen, turning it into helium, okay? And this creates an exothermic reaction as well. And um, the issue is here is it is so expensive to generate the heat that way, okay? Um, so much so uh, that it's almost like out of pricing and additionally, the materials used in anything close to some kind of fusion we have gets annihilated imme immediately. You can look at the uh, hydrogen bomb, okay? That's also a mix of fission and fusion. Um, and obviously, that whole thing is obliterated regardless. Um, so the idea of cold fusion is how can we generate power at room temperature and then therefore not need any kind of exotic elements that can withstand, you know, millions and millions and millions of degrees. So in 1989, electrochemists Martin Fleischmann and Stanley Pons conducted a study 
that was essentially the electrolysis of heavy water or deuterium um, on the surface of palladium electrode. They claimed that they had excess heat and uh, radioactive metabolites in the water. Google actually in 2019 spent a lot of money to research this because if that's the case, you can use the most abundant elements in the universe uh, for essentially uh, just extremely cheap power. Uh, spoiler, um, well, as far as we know, they did not uh, find any success in those endeavors. I, I really think, I really implore you guys to kind of research that because it's just cool in general. Folks, thank you so much for joining me. Um, it's, it's been wonderful and uh, stick around for the news and have a wonderful weekend.